if you were asked to describe what the Christian life was like, a lot of us might say something along the lines of, well, it means following Jesus. But if they asked you, what does that practically mean? What would your answer be? It wouldn't be an easy answer to give because trying to live for Jesus covers every area of life. And therefore, we would be able to talk about not just our worship, but our work and how we treat our wife and and what we do with our kids and, and all of these things that would be practical as well as relational as well as spiritual. So we have all of these different uh, areas that we're trying to put under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if we were to ask somebody what it looked like, we might say, you know, it looks like this over here and this over here and this over here. And, and in some ways, it's hard to get a picture of what the Christian life is like. If you were to just look at the individual things that you and I do to honor Jesus in every area. Well, this is kind of what we're getting when we're in Leviticus uh, chapter 19 as we continue our study through the book of Leviticus. We are going through the Bible and seeing that as God is wanting the people of Israel to follow his laws, it affects every area of their life. And so because it affects every area of their life, sections like the one we're going to read today seem disjointed. Yeah, only in the sense that it jumps from one category to another to another because God is wanting to be Lord of every area of their life. And that's what we're going to look at together today as we continue our study in the book of Leviticus. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. You can click subscribe to our channel and the bell for notifications so that you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the scripture together and pull one thing from it to be more like Jesus. Well, let's let's get an idea of what this looks like as we continue our study, as we finish out chapter 19 of Leviticus together. I think you're going to see that disjointed nature of the differing laws that God has given, but how it really correlates to all of their life. Let's take a look at it together. If a man sleeps with a female slave who is promised to another man, but who has not been ransomed or given her freedom, there must be due punishment. Yet they are not to be put to death because she had not been freed. The man, however, must bring a ram to the entrance of the tent of meeting for a guilt offering to the Lord. With the ram of the guilt offering, the priest is to make atonement for him before the Lord for the sin he has committed, and his sin will be forgiven. When you enter the land and plant any kind of fruit tree, regard its fruit as forbidden. For three years you are to consider it forbidden. It is not to be eaten. In the fourth year, all of its fruit will be holy, an offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year, you may eat its fruit. In this way, your harvest will be increased. I am the Lord your God. Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Do not practice divination or seek omens. Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute, or the land will turn to prostitution and be filled with wickedness. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Stand up in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly and revere your God. I am the Lord. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native-born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not, be, you do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Use honest scales and honest weights, an honest ephah, an honest hen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Keep all my decrees and all my laws and follow them. I am the Lord. You know, one of the things that you'll notice throughout this passage of Scripture is that throughout these commands, we see repeated many, many times, I am the Lord your God. In other words, the reason why they're doing all of these things 
not just because they're following the law, but honestly because they're following the Lord. They are conscious of God, and they want to follow what he has said. And so there are a lot of different decrees. So some of these have to do with worship and how to worship him, right? To observe the Sabbaths and and have reverence for a sanctuary. Don't go out and seek out mediums and spiritists. But then there are other things that are like, do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. You know, these are practical matters that, that they were supposed to look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way, even in the way that they're gardening their plants. That if they plant a new fruit tree, they're not supposed to eat of their fruit for three years. The fourth year, it's all given to the Lord. And the fifth year, they can uh, then uh, take part in what they have planted. You know, all of these things have to do with the fact that God is their God. And they're going to honor him in every way. That's why these laws are put forth. But if you were to ask somebody who is, an, who is a Jew, how do you follow God? They would probably quote these passages from Leviticus. This is how we follow God. This is how we show our love for God. But notice it comes in all of those different areas of their life. We have the same admonition in following Christ in our life. If we look in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, it encapsulates very, very succinctly the things that we're reading in Leviticus. But there are a lot, there's a lot more to it than just that succinct saying. It just covers every area of life. Let's take a look at it real quick. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. See, this is really what Leviticus 19 is all about, what these laws that we're seeing in the Old Testament are all about. They're built on the understanding that God is God. He has redeemed them. And as a, 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 as a, as a matter of worship of their redemption, that they choose to follow him in every area of life, in the menial things and in the big things in the things that have to do with how they they exercise their uh, work or their home life or however, you know, everything's to be done with the conscience that God is the one whom they're serving in the end. We're serving the same God who has sent his son to die for us. And we're called to do the same thing, that in every area of our life, we're supposed to be serving Jesus. So whether you're at work today or whether you're at home today, whether you're at school or you're parenting your kids, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And it's going to look different. There's going to be some things that you're going to do for your wife that, that have to do with cleaning the house. There are going to be some things that you do with your kids that have to do with... with uh, disciplining them and making sure they're being set on the right path. There are certain prohibitions that you're going to do in your own life because you're doing it because you're honoring God. And if you understand that, you can understand these passages in Leviticus a whole lot better. God bless you. I hope that helps you today. And we will talk with you again tomorrow.